Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls. It's our weekly angelic message for March 18th, 2024, the week of. So we will see what the story is. I do want to give you an update if you want to get in and get a reading with me. I'm still running well ahead of schedule, so get in now. That will not be the case coming up here in spring. Okay? Angelsouls444.com Live sessions, live reading sessions, or a live course on how to connect with your angels, uh, how to do angel mediumship. If you have purchased the angel mediumship package, you need to use those up now, okay? Because those will those will expire, all right? So make sure you're using that up. If you want to get one of those sessions, you can come email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. I could probably get you in this week. But remember, when I'm recording these, and once I get it loaded, whoever sees it first, if they get in ahead of you, you may not get in this week. Okay, so I just want to give you an update on that. But standard readings, angelsouls444.com. Live sessions, email. Okay, all right. Let's see what the uh, story is here. A deep freeze, 26. This, things are going to get moving here pretty quickly. But this is the first card coming out of the deck. So I think we're coming into this week feeling like we're stuck. Like everything is just at a standstill. This might be you also putting a deep freeze on people gossiping about you, um, people speaking ill of you, wanting to maybe rush into a friendship with you because they're envious of you. So the faster they get close to you, the faster, at least in their brain, I'm sure, they can start controlling you. Whatever the case may be, this is the energy that's starting off this week. Now, we are coming up into eclipses, y'all, okay? <laughs> Make sure you are getting ready for that. Dry desert, look at this. The number is 31 on here, reduces to four. So, this makes me feel hot and cold. So, you might be hot and cold about a decision that you're making, or maybe something has gotten set into motion, you're kind of hot and cold about it. Something is coming to the surface and you are of two minds about it. Now, dry desert, in my mind, is associated with not being very fertile, but that's that's the surface level way of looking at it. But think of like a cactus. There's cacti there in the background. They can survive through everything. So more than anything, it's strength, okay? <laughs> Someone's on my porch. Okay, that was a little weird. There's also... Weirdly enough, I'm not, I'm in Ohio now. I'm not near the mountains, but there's high wind going on today as well. So I wonder if something didn't get knocked over. Anyway, that was weird. It spooked me out a little bit, but we're fine. We're back. Hi. <laughs> okay. So dry desert is, you know, I also think of Jesus in the desert. It's a learning time. It's learning how to be strong. It's learning how to survive in the harshest conditions. And it also feels like you've kind of come to a place of acceptance around this. Maybe you just accepted and gotten so used to things being difficult. Okay. Sorry, there was a card sticking out and then I felt no. So let me just shuffle here again. It's not, I know like the popular thing on social media is if there's a card sticking out, that's a special message. Sometimes yes, but I always uh, sit and feel it out first. And if it's a no, it's a no. <laughs> like, I know we want magical thinking around everything, but it doesn't always work. Rock bottom, the number's 10. This is, oh my gosh, you guys, you have been stuck. We have been stuck for so long. And finally, we're coming to a place where we can't go any further the way that we have. Now, in a big way, I'm going to be getting the um, podcast back up, the Angel Souls podcast. If you guys don't know what happened, this was a while ago, probably going on a month ago. I had recorded a podcast, but the mic wasn't on. And then just last night, I started having problems with the platform that I was going through. Discovered I really did not like the customer service and how they were handling things. And so now I'm not on there. I got to figure out how to do the podcast. But then I got sick and I got sick to the point where I didn't have a voice. So obviously I can't record a podcast <laughs> if I don't have a voice, right? So w once this clears up, I mean, I feel fine, but it's just, it doesn't sound very nice. So anyway, you know, um, keep that in mind. So a lot of things are happening, changing. I will be doing, like I said, podcasts probably around topics like this, but especially when it comes to people, you know, I talk all the time about narcissism and there's good reason for that because we need to be talking about that. We need to be, we're so 
numb to toxic behavior, including victimhood, including communal narcissism. We're seeing a ton of that where people pretend to care about a cause and they will adopt all of the things to make them look like a good person. People who are not good people who have darkness working through them will take on these roles that in a surface level kind of way makes them look like they're really good. You know what I'm saying? So again, I'll do a whole podcast around that and around why there's so much hatred towards people who believe in something beyond the physical. Well, that'll be a whole separate podcast. But anyway, hitting rock bottom. This could be like no motivation to do anything. Not really loving doing what you once used to do. Like, yeah, disappointment. A disappointment around people you thought you could trust. You know, coming to some realization. Hey, I don't, I don't get out of this friendship what I put into it. Or I don't get out of this job what I put into it. Um realizing where you haven't set proper boundaries that's for some of you um dealing with people who are very self-indulgent right if you have anybody like let's say you're at a party and someone corners you and they just talk and talk and talk and they just talk about themselves and even if you speak up and you say oh I can relate to that I had this happen they're like yeah whatever and they're almost like looking at you like you're rude like you interrupted that's a red flag. Get away from those people, okay? Get away from those people. That's that narcissism. Um, also pay attention to, there's some strategy around dynamics. So you're starting to wake up and realize, okay, I was put into this job to be the scapegoat or I'm the scapegoat of my family or um, if it's in a friend group, you know, I'm realizing I'm invited so I bring whatever expensive thing or I drive. I remember that was a big thing out in LA. I had this group of friends who I really didn't like them very much. They weren't very nice people, <laughs> but um, they would invite me to go out sometimes. And I felt like, well, they're making an effort. So I'm going to say yes. And then it was like, okay, Michelle, you can drive us around LA and whatever. So drive everybody home. LA is huge, by the way. So I'd have to be the one. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm giving all these examples so that we can start waking up to these toxic behaviors and realizing that the word no is incredibly powerful. And you don't need to be afraid if someone's going to disapprove of your no. Now, some people have even normalized getting into these toxic relationships, like love partnerships. Good God, we could sit here all day talking about that. If you're in a dangerous situation and saying no would cause problems for you, please make sure that you're getting proper help and support around that. But there's something, some area of your life where you're like, I have hit rock bottom. If you've ever stepped on a scale and you saw the big number and you're like, oh, oh uh, 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 yeah, hi. Um, <laughs> I'm getting older now, so I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's it, but dang. But anyway, you might be going <laughs> rock bottom on this. Or maybe in all seriousness, you go to the doctor and they're like, hey, you know, you, you need to turn this around now, right? Listen to that. That's the energy that's setting up this week. Let's get more. Stuck in the mud. Aw, you guys. All right. Well, I don't have to talk about that too much. There's a lot of all these other examples I've been giving where we're feeling stuck. We're feeling maybe even unmotivated. I'm hearing that as well. Okay. So there, there's a huge shift, but it happens towards the end of the week. So this is magic prayer. Uh, numbers 32. There's a massive shift that's going on here. All right. And you're, you're building up to it. Now, as we get into April, I probably, <laughs> I know, I know as far as the monthly overviews, I did them for March. Nobody watched them. Okay. Now this is where I need to start because I've done this before where I've listened to what kind of content my audience wants to see. And then I spent days doing it and nobody watched it. And then the excuses, and yes, I'm very distinctively calling these excuses is, oh, I don't get notifications, blah, blah, blah. I like, yeah, I said blah, 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 because it is just an excuse. Everyone has their phones glued to their eyeballs. If you really wanted to see it, you know where the channel is, you would go look it up. People are not interested, okay? So if you, as I said, April, if you're like, oh, when are the April? They're not, okay? Because I'm not going to put days of work into dead content, okay? I'm not doing it. <laughs> so I'm going to reserve that time for me. Cool? I'm sure you can understand. Well, unless you're a narcissist, then of course you're going to play victim or whatever. That's fine. 
But, um, you know, these are the kinds of things that we're going through. These are the kinds of very real examples of how we need to shut one thing down and let another thing grow. So towards the end of this week, you're going to start seeing some of these shifts and things are going to be kind of wild coming up here in April. Let's get one more card. Wishing well, 48. Look at this. So don't be too disheartened if you're having to dump friends or back away from people because you're like, well, I don't know. Like this, this was not, <laughs> this is not turning out in the nice way that I had thought. Toxic people are going to play victim. So be ready for that. But I'm talking to the healthy minded people out there. When, if you've been feeling stuck, right? If you have been feeling like there's no progress, whatever area of life it is, maybe you've been single for a very long time. There's going to be something coming up. First of all, there could be a job breakthrough for a lot of you. There's going to be something coming up where you realize, hey, and I'm going to go down the road because I'm single myself. So, you know, the road of like, oh, you're single and you're the one who gets taken advantage of, right? Have you ever, if you're a single person, have you ever like been, like let's say you're in a group of people and they're couples and they're actually families and they say, oh, let's all split the bill. And the family of four expects you to take on the same amount of costs as their family of four, right? So like, let's say you're the single person, there's a couple and then a family and they say, oh, let's divide it by three. You're cheap and you're greedy. And like, that's just, to me, that's disgusting. That is taking advantage of someone else and trying to get them to cover a portion of your bill when they have one salary. Keep in mind, karma is going to be deeply in play. So if you, like, let's say you're the, I'm going to keep with the single example. Let's say you're a single person, you go out to dinner with a couple, more so, let's say it was supposed to be you and your friend, but they're so codependent with their partner or their partner's so controlling that the partner has to come along and they say, okay, let's split the bill down, down the middle. Those kinds of people, they're splitting costs. I just saw somebody mention this as well on TikTok and I think, <laughs> I, I was like, yes, right on. Something definitely to talk about. Um but yeah, just see where people are taking advantage of you. But you might be sitting here going, you know what? I have blocked out love because I didn't want the kind of dynamic that my friend has. I haven't seen very good examples. Because a lot of people who brag about, for example, being in partnerships or having families, their partner is like, it's not, it's not a good connection. Like I don't, I look at everybody and go, okay, I would never want to be trapped like that. I see it as being trapped. Now, if I had a healthy minded love partner come along, we're on the same page, like it's all good, then yes, like th there could be something there. But people who have kids and those kids are running them, running their lives or causing a lot of havoc in their lives. And they're like, oh, well, that's the price of being a parent. Makes me glad I never had kids. I'm sorry. Okay. But we're talking real talk here because this is some stuff. Okay. These are the kinds of things that we get conditioned and groomed to believe that we are wrong. Like you're wrong for being single. You're wrong for being overweight if that's, you know, something that you're dealing with. Or you're wrong for, I gotta be careful what I say here. Um, overweight, I can usually get away with that. But like certain other habits, like, you know, habits, <laughs> right? You know, you're wrong for doing that. You're wrong for not just jumping into an argument and choosing a side. You're wrong for not you know, I don't know, like I could go on and on for an hour talking about how we've been conditioned. So if you are sitting at home and you end up finding that you like your own company <laughs> better than being around some people, um, every situation is different, but that doesn't always have to be a bad thing. You know, sometimes you just see the toxicity and not participating in it is a beautiful thing, right? So you're realizing that. So this could be like an internal perception that starts breaking open and you realize that people have been throwing a story at you and you have really bought into the story. Their lives are not better than yours. They are not better people than you. Okay. Now, some of you, if you're trying to back away from toxic situations, toxic habits, maybe you're somebody who's trying not to take so much alcohol in and someone's like, oh, wh what's happened to you? Like, you're so blah, 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 blah. But they won't look at how much alcohol they're consuming, right? Like, they won't, they don't want to admit that maybe they have a problem. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I dealt with that back in my party days. <laughs> like, I was not, I mean, I liked being out and around people and I liked dancing and stuff like that, but I wasn't big on alcohol at all. And 
The second I was like, ah, I don't really want to be out in, in all that. And people were like, what's wrong with you? That sort of thing. So one, there's the internal shifting of, you know, maybe I'm not, there's nothing wrong with me. Okay. You know, there's, we all have room for improvement, but as, as far as like that narrative of there's something wrong with you, if you don't live life the way we say, you're learning to shift away from that. The other thing, the other manifestations that are going to be coming out. One, you're going to realize that things that seemed insurmountable, again, you got used to the struggle. That's all those, I'm not even going to hold them up again. That's like rock bottom, whatever, like all the ones that were there, um, stuck in the mud. You've just maybe gotten to a place of accepting this is where my life is and this is just how it's going to go. And then something opens up. Okay. Now, as I say that, I'm not encouraging anyone to just sit back and wait for things to happen for them. It's going to be, it's going to be a rough journey here. It's not a bad week. It's not a bad week. Um, but it's going to be hard to look at people you love and go, dang, no, if you're going to continue to act like that, I can't be around you. No. And on your way out, they will point the finger at you and say, you are the problem. With what expertise do I speak on this? Number one, I'm a spiritual practitioner. I've been doing this a long time. And two, I have lived it. Okay. I have lived it. I have lived being the scapegoat and a lot of dynamics. Last corporation I was at, there was gossip and rumors. It ruined my career. And nobody accepted the truth. Truth is coming out. And I don't care if this has been a decade, two decades, two months. Something is coming to light. Now, I'm going to tell you this straight out. A lot of you who have come across this video, you're the one that karma is going to hit pretty hard. Because you've been walking around in life like you're this great person hiding behind causes. Pretending like you care, but what you really care about is how you look. Being manipulative towards others. You're just glazing over what's real. Because you can't link into it. Because you can't link into true empathy. You're having a hard time linking into authenticity. And so you want to steal someone else's. April 8th is going to be a real big day for you. And the time leading up to it, which is now, and the time after. Big time for you. For others. The ones that have seemingly unfairly taken one hit after another. It's going to be hard for you to trust this. It's going to be hard for you to trust, you know, like let's say you've been single for a very long time. We were using that example before. We'll keep with it. Let's say you were single for a very long time. All of a sudden this loving person comes out and you meet them and it's sort of like you'll have a hard time trusting it. Always be careful. You know, limerence gets confused with love all the time. Uh, it's usually limerence or lust that gets labeled soulmate connections or twin flame connections, which is a part of this darkness narrative to get people in unhealthy dynamics. Because one of the most powerful things that can happen is when one good-hearted light being connects with another. That's an amplification of that light. To keep that from happening, there are some forces that just don't want that to happen because they lose power. They lose their existence a little bit because the light will outshine it. They don't want that happening. And so there has been this blanketed sort of energy that really messes with our heads about, you know, what is a healthy dynamic? What, um, what magical story can we put around something? You feel me? 60% of the population won't get it. They won't get it. So I'm here to say, if you're feeling especially isolated... If you are one of those people who goes around saying, I just don't like people, okay? And I'm not saying this in like a personality disorder kind of way. Like that's something different. But I'm saying like you just go out there, you've had your heart broken over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and I have to keep putting these disclaimers in here. I'm not talking about narcissistic people who play the victim because someone didn't do as they say or someone didn't validate them or 
you know, someone didn't fall for your manipulation and so you're playing victim. You're also, you're in the dark camp. You're on that side of things. You keep talking about this great split, this great energetic split. You're in that side. I don't know what's going to happen to you. I'm not, I'm, I don't know the mind of God, but um, I don't know. But the rest of the people will go into a different um, frequency where you may find yourself quite alone. You may find yourself getting bored. This is another really big indicator. Now, some people will say being bored around others. Again, it gets a little touchy, doesn't it? But um, because who are we to say that? But if you get bored around others and you just don't think that their jokes are very funny, maybe they're making jokes that genuinely are not funny, like that are kind of mean, mean spirited or basic I don't know is it, can we say basic <laughs> right and if you find yourself getting bored and just being like I, I just don't find these things to be funny or I just don't find this to be entertaining I don't find it to be entertaining to be in a crowd with a bunch of angry people shouting about a cause when I know they're not even authentic in what they're trying to back up so I'm going to go home and I'm going to help in a way that might be truly effective right I'm going to stay home and do it that way or Let's say you have a group of friends who, um, I'm shedding, I've got hair everywhere, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, um, let's say you're around a group of people and again, all they can do is talk about themselves. They don't even know you. You're just a warm body in the room. You're like a filler flower, right? Or you're like a buffer for the people they don't want to talk to so they end up sending you know you over to talk. Whatever it is, if you're not finding it entertaining anymore, it's not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. Same kind of thing would go on with other, you know, examples. If you're tired of listening to these supposed fitness experts, just talk about how dumb you are. I Best post I think I've seen all week was like, you know, I don't know. They, they put it in a way funnier way than I'm about to put it. It was like something like, you know, um, getting tired of people telling you, if you're craving sweets, why don't you just have an apple? And the response was, because it doesn't taste like a red velvet cupcake, you, <laughs> you know, like things like this, this, this is bigger than just the individual. Obviously, each of you out there watching this, you're going to have this individual experience, but there's a wider implication going on here. So this could be seen through lies, seeing through just the narrative out there. There's plenty of them going on, but a lot of them are starting to show their cracks, right? It's starting to crack and little pieces are falling down. And we're, there could be a little bit of shock here. But more than anything, if you are truly someone who carries the light, not someone who, you know, you heard some spiritual talk, you heard a spiritual practitioner throw a term around and so you just adopted it because you thought it was cute. And you start, see, this is what, ugh. should I talk about this? I should talk about this. I should talk. So when, when COVID happened, right, um, a lot of people on YouTube, I know this for a fact, we started to suffer. No one's seeing our content anymore. Part of that might have been we were talking about touchy subjects. Um, so you get, you get shadow banned with that. But this is also where TikTok, you notice I'm not, I don't even care anymore. Nobody's seeing my videos anyway. So <laughs> this is a labor of love at this point. But, you know, the TikTok came on. And... People who were trying to make the transition from YouTube over to TikTok, it just didn't translate. I, I can't explain it. I don't know too many people who went from the YouTube platform over to TikTok who were very successful. Some people went from YouTube to Instagram and it was okay-ish. But, you know, we have our, it's like our little clicks. Like you're either a YouTuber or an Instagram or an uh, Insta person. What, what's the word for them? It's not Instagram <laughs> That's what I wanted to say, but you know, Instagram people. Um, and then you have your, your TikTokers. Um, I, I swear to God, I know I'm still on Facebook, but whatever. Anyway, um, you know, it just didn't translate. And so a lot of uh, people started kind of tanking in their message. And things became very much about a short attention span. Uh, we saw YouTube come out with YouTube shorts to try to, you know, compete with that short attention span. It's just not working. It's just not working. And so messages got lost and, you know, people started to become sort of more enchanted by people who, quite frankly, were probably unemployed 
around that time. A lot of people were losing their jobs. So I'm going to sling cards and make some money on social media. I think a lot of them got hit with a hard reality um, that you don't make a ton of money. Well, a lot, some people do. It's like anything. Like if you publish a book or you publish a piece of music, yeah, you could hit it big, but most people don't, okay? <laughs> it's not usually how that goes. Um, so people, I think, learned a hard lesson. But the detrimental overall effect with spiritual talk and spiritual readings and, and things like that is that they become, they become so shallow. The hook, when you've got someone's attention for a few seconds, the hook is he don't love you. You know, he's cheating on you. So hooking into people who are already extremely vulnerable and again, I've been doing this a while. People who, um, maybe they're younger souls. Maybe they haven't had so many timelines. Um, you can just tell the difference. You know, people who can sit back and not have a reaction to something. Maybe they've just shut down. But more than anything, like they, it's like, imagine like somebody who is, let's say a Gen Xer. Who's responding to a Gen Zer. Uh, maybe the Gen Z said something kind of controversial or something kind of derogatory towards their generation. Someone who is an older soul might have something intelligent to say about that, but it's not going to be, oh yeah, well, da 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 da. <laughs> they're not going to stoop to that lower common denominator. Does that make sense? So they're going to let some things pass. So they're going to handle it uh, a lot better than maybe some younger souls, right? But we're not seeing a whole lot of that. We're seeing, again, the quick hook readings, spiritual practice. And so what's, what I'm seeing, and I'm already feeling like YouTube is quite dated. I feel like I'm still in the party house that nobody comes to anymore. <laughs> I'm Studio 54 over here. Like nobody, <laughs> It's shut down. It might have been something in its heyday, but it's not anything anymore. But I'm still here. Because, one, I don't want to break my over 10-year streak of not missing a weekly upload. Um, and so many of you are like, you've missed. No, you missed the weekly uploads. I didn't miss anything. Not through anything. I It's always been there, okay? Other types of content have shifted, come and gone, but that has always stayed steady. So that's part of it. But also, I believe in this. And I believe it's important to tap into spirit and you know, on my, on my part, just put out a video or something to keep us sane. But I will tell you that a lot of people are misusing this and will continue to misuse this. That's the divide. That's the divide. So even people who are really big carriers of light, they're starting to go into this big scramble. And I'm seeing this and I feel for them. I go into scrambles too, because we're still growing. We're still adjusting. We have to adjust to a different frequency. And still get along in this density world that doesn't make any freaking sense. Why are we paying taxes? I'm sorry. I'm not trying to like be controversial and I, pay your taxes. Okay, pay your taxes. But here in the U.S., we have income tax. There's property tax. There's sales tax. There are all these things. And just my personal opinion, I'm being forced to pay money to go towards something that I don't agree with. Why are we doing that? You see what I'm saying? Why do these banks have so much control over us? Why do they get to take our money and go make money off of our money and then turn around and charge us fees? And usually those fees are pure trickery because your bill is still due on a Sunday, but they won't process it until a Monday and then hit you with a late fee. You see what I'm saying? Why, why this whole thing of like here in the United States, we have a credit score. Okay. Now <laughs> I've, I've been told plenty of times, Hey, congratulations on your credit score, but we're not going to give you a mortgage. I've told this story before, you know where I'm going with this because you have 1099 income. So we can't, that's not steady or whatever. So we can't, we can't give it to you. But also, um, the mortgage lender, and I've heard this a couple of times now, could not believe that I was a single woman. Oh, yes, this happens. You think this only happens in the movies I've lived in, okay? A single woman, where's your husband? Ooh. Where's your husband? <laughs> what, you know, shouldn't your husband be here for this process? My camera shut off. I think it's trying to tell me to shut up. But anyway, that's still in play. Those things still happen. If you find yourself with these cards, 
it's like we're stuck we're in a dry desert feeling kind of isolated but something's breaking open we're going to be moving forward it's realizing i think that you don't have to give into these narratives and people are going to fight you on it people are going to treat you like you are the problem like especially even down to like i've expressed how i feel about certain world events that are going on right now and people have been very hateful why because i said something i think is kind of like coming out of that narrative and going here's the bigger picture but you're doing exactly what they want you to do, which is to fight each other. That's, that's what they want. But I went up here because I'm tired and I can't be down here. Don't drag me in. Don't drag me in. I'll do what I can from a space of love. As much as that is worth to anybody who's willing to accept it. I'll be there. But don't come at me with your opinions. Okay, like, <laughs> don't come at me with, like, you need to believe as I do. I think I told you guys I got, uh, it was in Colorado Springs, I got stopped on a trail, a hiking trail. And this woman who didn't seem like she was clear, um, I'm, I'm trying to be kind, um, <laughs> uh, she wasn't, she didn't seem very clear, but she was like, have you, have you discovered the beauty and, and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? And I said, I have. Well, what church do you go through, go to? I don't. Well, then you haven't accepted. The, yes, I have. Who are you to define what relationship I have with the divine and all the divine players? It's very threatening to people because I didn't sign up to a club. Okay. I, I'm out here doing my thing on my own with my own opinions that's what i'm saying like if you feel a little isolated I f i'm there with you i'm there with you um if you don't feel like la laughing at the stupid jokes anymore <laughs> now please don't be mean to like elderly people okay like don't do that like some of them that's how they relate that's how they're relating to you like don't don't be cruel okay but if you know someone especially if you've got a narcissist like one of those darker energy people who's very manipulative and they're sitting in front of you and they're just you know, making jokes maybe at your expense. Don't laugh at that. If anything, this week and leading up to these eclipses is teaching us to preserve our energy. And I, I've most of my readings are about stepping out of what is expected, trying to take a, a broader viewpoint on something. Um, and, and stepping out of where you funnel your energy, you know, going back to content creation for just a moment, there are a couple of content creators that took off. These are spiritual people, millions of subscribers, good on them, good on them. They probably got with a company that's like helping them with that. I've always been scared to do that. Now the companies don't ask and that's fine. <laughs> like, that's fine. But like there was a time. Actually, um, right when they were starting to take off, I was getting approached by these companies to have that backing. And it just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel right. Now, maybe that's my own thing where I was just holding myself back and self-sabotaging. I'll never know. That's okay. My, I've always trusted my life is going to flow the direction it needs to flow in. But there are some people out there who... I, now, I don't, to be clear, I don't see those people as sellouts. I don't see that. I think they are burned out, though. I think they are burned out. Because you will see, I mean, obviously, every time you sit down to create content, like, there's not going to be so much different. Like, it's the same stuff. Hey, world's crazy. Okay. We should rise above. We should learn. And <laughs> it's going to be that same message over and over. Sure. Sure, there might be some little different details. But a lot of these people, they're saying the same things over and over and over and over and over again that now they've had to put on their entertainment face. And these are big YouTubers that you know. You're not seeing the authentic person anymore. You can't possibly. Because an authentic human being couldn't keep up with that, right? So they're coming out, they're doing the song and dance because they've got a contract perhaps, um, because there's just expectation. Maybe there's just sort of an unwritten contract between them and the audience that they are going to keep showing up um, and people are just happy to see them there, right? But 
conversely, there are so many people, and I'm telling you this for good reason. If you're like, why are we still talking about this? For good reason. There are some other social media people, not necessarily YouTubers, but on other platforms who had like, I'm talking like 27 million subscribers and said, I quit. I quit. Because this is toxic and it's not worth my soul. It is not worth my peace. We are going to be seeing more and more and more and more and more that I just heard a big, uh, not a YouTuber, excuse me, on TikTok, a big uh, person on TikTok basically say, hey, anybody who gets into this, I don't know if people are okay with me saying their names in, in like videos, so that's why I'm not saying the name, but like they, they had a good point. And this person said, nobody goes into social media thinking it's going to be permanent. And if you do, you're being a fool. <laughs> you know, uh, social media is constantly changing because it is a social thing. And social things are always changing because they involve people. And people are always changing, right? So a lot of this is like, I, I, I'm getting at here, like the way we receive our messages, the way we receive our social connections even, going to be drastically shifting. And I have no idea what it looks like. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just trying not to break my streak and I want to connect in with angels. I want to help other people connect in with angelic frequency. But even in the angelic realm, which is like a niche within a niche within a niche, it's ridiculous over here. Can I tell you? You want the tea? You want to lean in? How long is this video? Long. Doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> lean in. Let me tell you. Ugh. If I hear one more person say that they are an incarnated angel or... I don't even know. Like, I'm in contact with this one archangel and therefore, la, 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 la. It's ridiculous. It, I think it's more competitive over here. Now, I've stepped out of it. I don't even, I don't want anything to do with that. Um, not because I think I'm a bigger person. I'm just tired. I, I just, I ain't got it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I, I still, I'm still trying to get my house in order. <laughs> After all these months, still trying to get my home in order. I mean, it's together mostly, but just... Not as nicely as I would want it to be. So I got that to work on. You know, I've got regular life stuff happening. I'm shifting and growing myself. I don't know what kind of things I'm going to be offering with Angel Souls in the future. I don't know if I'm going to limit it just to the U.S. I might do that because there's just so many ways that powers that be are trying to attack people who don't have the resources to have a whole legal team. So there's a lot of attacks on this. And I know that people are kind of... Um, you know, they're, they're doubling down. That's what I'm saying. There's like so much competition and uh, people acting like, <laughs> like they've invented angels. That's been happening a lot. I don't know. It's just so ridiculous. And please forgive me if I've stepped out of it. Um, but yeah, we'll just see. So I'm now messing with stuff on my table. Anyway, I'm sitting here going on and on and on. The point of me saying all of this is because it needs to be said. Because if we don't go into the weeds, if we don't break open the tropes that get thrown at us all the time and start giving some real life examples, if we don't go into that, you're going to glaze right over it. Okay. I'm going to glaze right over it. Right. And then we're no better for it. All right. So messy talk. Something is coming out of this. Do not be shallow. Look at the deeper implications. Look at your deeper patterns. Whether you are someone that goes around expecting everyone to cater to you or you're someone that's feeling like constantly stepped on and constantly like you're never heard. You're never heard. I just had this whole realization that like I don't think there are too many people that know much about my life. If I didn't come on here on, this, on these videos and say it, nobody would know because nobody asks. Like, I'm a background person to them. You know, like the Dolores Cannon thing where, like, was the NPCs or whatever. Um, there are people, like, narcissists, and and I'm going to say, maybe I'm just biased, but I feel like they're, like, very toxic people. They have toxic behavior. They see me as the NPC, and I'm seeing them as, like, someone who just steals my energy and doesn't deserve it. Do you see what I'm saying? Or if you're somebody who victimizes yourself. Quick example before we let this video go. Um, I was just, I don't know why this popped up in my head today. Maybe it's because Mercury retrograde is about to come. Um, there's also a lot of us getting made fun of for Mercury retrograde. Again, I'll talk about that in a podcast. But anyway, I was thinking about how there was this horrible, stressful thing that was going on in one of my jobs. 
I mean, it was high stress. And this is when I lived in New York City. And um, so many other things had happened leading up to this time. And then it was like very, like a lot of negative attention was on me. And I didn't do nothing. Okay. I didn't do nothing. Okay. Like it was one of those, this is the gossip thing where people just made up a story and pretended like it was true, whatever. So anyway, I was going through all this. And I remember I called another assistant that was in a, in a different country. And she picked up the phone. Yeah, Michelle. Like she was so busy and too busy to talk. And that person later was like, oh, I was stressed because I had this one personal thing going on in my life. And it wasn't even that big a deal. It was just, she was playing victim playing victim and taking because she's let I I feel like she's led such a charmed life it sounds like I don't know it sounds like she's led such a charmed life that one little thing happens and she's imploding and then people who have consistently just out of survival had to just keep reinventing themselves or getting themselves back up to get knocked down again and they've learned to do a break fall at this point you know what I mean having to take more off of the spoiled person who hasn't had to do that right this is that time where you're breaking open and you are starting to understand this. I feel really good about this because I just felt a shift of some of you who have been like maybe hiding almost going, oh my gosh, someone gets me. Oh my gosh, someone understands me. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And are we in the minority? Probably. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not feeling real good about people these days. <laughs> I'm just not. Oh, like I'm just trying to get like the simplest stuff done and someone's got to give you attitude and like, oh, you know, they don't want to blame you for existing and, you know, all these kinds of things. So just keep that in mind for this week. Now I'm going to go ahead here. Um, this is a really long video. It's going to be chopped up probably in my little card thing. So I'm going to have to put that all together. So if you see those weird little jump cuts that don't match up, it's because my camera shut off and I'm not a videographer. I listen oh my phone's going off too okay pay no attention to that we're going to be doing <laughs> some daily breakdowns make sure you're watching those dailies make sure you're sharing them if you want to share this message with other people who you know i don't know will that pick up on the mic dun, 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 dun. anyway that's my phone i can't go get it right now but anyway <laughs> share this with people who might benefit from it we're not encouraging people to play victim we're encouraging people to stop seeing everyone as victims and preserve some of that energy for yourself so that you can grow and come on through. And especially if you've been kept down, I'm not talking to people who are spoiled and one thing happened to you and you act like it's the end of the world when other people have been suffering for a very, very, very long time. I'm talking, I thought it was about to ring again. Um, I'm talking more to the people who, again, you've just been so used to being in this energy and now finally it's your time and something nice is coming through okay so watch the dailies we'll leave it there i'm sending you all so much love and take care